the big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mom in the fucking stand. Can you give us, yes, like, tell done. us the origin of how this actually started? It started with a book. A woman named Caroline Kepnett. If you met her, she's the sweetest woman. She seems like light and filled with joy. And she wrote this book that's inside this guy's head. From page one, mm -hmm. he is, it's entirely inside his head. Back walks in on the first page. And he's like, this is why you're wearing those bracelets. This is why <sighs> you're wearing that loose sweater. Let me, yeah. let me Sherlock Holmes the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. And I, um, Greg Berlanti, who is sort of a mega super producer. Mm -hmm. Um, I've known him for a few years and he sent it to me and he said, I just read this book. I'm not going to say too much. I'm really addicted to it. I'm sending it to my friends. They're binging it like a TV show. When you read it, maybe you'll get it. Call me if you get it. You'll also, if you get it, you'll get why I can't write it myself. Um, and the short form of that is like, you kind of need a girl in the mix. You uh -huh. know? Right. Um, he was like, I'm not going to write a show by myself about stalking a woman. I think I need to write that with a woman, which right. I respect a lot. Sure. Um, so I, within 30 or 40 pages, I was like, I totally get it. I called him, I was really excited. It felt like a really special book. So we, I'll tell you a little story about how we went to yeah. sell it. Cause yeah. you know, when you're, when you're selling a TV show, you, um, you go around and you pitch to executives at the different networks. Mm -hmm. What we did with the help of our assistants was lightly stalk one person in each room what? Wow, brilliant. <laughs> Nothing you can't find on whatever social media or interviews or websites are out there. So you knew like we're going to pitch to this team of these four yeah, executives. Yeah, like we're going to HBO. Let's right. pick like the, you know, maybe the second in command at HBO who might be in there. You know, whatever that yeah. is. Love all it. At all of the places. So I was like, this is either going to work or I'm never going to work again. Right. Or that person's not going to be in the meeting that day. And then <laughs> that didn't like, happen oh, though. You oh, know, we get good. a list of who's going to be there. Okay, yeah. good. Um, this was, I mean, I credit and blame Greg for this brilliant idea. Oh. Um, but we, the point we were trying to make is that you don't really have to be Mr. Robot to stalk someone right. and get a lot of really specific information about so where they get their hair done, how did you where their kids go to soccer. Oh. What was your choice for like bringing this out in the pitch? Like how did you do it in the pitch? What'd you do? <laughs> you know, Greg is a really nice guy, very warm. He's pitching to you maybe his show, but you feel like you're just having a conversation with him. He's delightful, mm -hmm. and he'd be like, you know. And the thing about Joe is that he's he's just like me or you. He doesn't have any special skills, and just the same way that I. And then he'd like just pick up a piece of paper and he'd be like, know that you go to the dry bar in Encino at Sunday on ten at ten a.m. usually for your blowout, and that your kids go to this summer camp, and that they you know went to the Taylor Swift concert last wow. season, and the, the tickets were VIP, and like everyone's eyes just got huge but it proved the point yeah, yeah, yeah. that privacy wow. privacy is dead dead yeah. you don't actually even really need to be active yourself on social media you know humans who are active on social media yeah. and if somebody really wants to they can they can do a lot yeah. Yeah. And, you know luckily i think that most people are less unhinged than joe but that was one thing we so we went around we sold it that's what we did so okay so Brilliant. now so amazing pitch idea uh -huh. you, you get the show is initially, as, as far as I understand, uh, produced by Lifetime, is that we right? We sold it, so we sold it to Showtime. To Showtime. The lovely folks at Showtime. Mm -hmm. We wrote a few drafts. We spent probably a year in development at Showtime and mm -hmm. and we just had a difference of opinion about the direction of the show and they were very um, friendly about it and we sort of parted friends and then with that finished script, Lifetime picked it up straight to series. Now, is that um, didn't mm. show? Did Showtime have the rights to it because they developed it with you, or how does that work? It works a little differently every time. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think a, a common way that these things work is that you work with a studio, and then the studio, you know, essentially the studio is selling or renting it to the network. Okay. And the network is kind of the buyer. So you have your studio, and they they try to get the best terms that they can to protect the project in the event that you have to take it somewhere else, especially in this day and age, a lot of things are enjoying second and third and fourth lives. Right. Because they're, I think probably in the time that this podcast will happen, some new version of Hulu will be born. Right. Yeah. Yes. We'll hear about right. it in the yeah. trades next week. So um, it behooves the studio to protect itself when it can. Right. And in this case, you know, and I, I mean, it's kind of above my pay grade, exactly how they make that work. I'm not really in the, the legal, I mean, I read contracts when they send them to me. But right. I'm not the expert in that. But basically, yeah. we're a year in development at Showtime. You guys uh, part ways in a, yeah. in a nice way. And then you go, okay, uh, Life Lifetime, Lifetime says, hey, we'd we like to it. make it. Um, so then it's like, this is this is where it's going to live, right? Yeah. Is that, that's, and, but that's it. Obviously, you're like, this yeah. is where the show is going to live. I mean, Netflix were our international partners from the beginning. We okay. were, it was a co-production with them. But the first 
airing in the United States Lifetime. So it was a Lifetime show, which I found subversively wonderful because it's yeah. about you know gender dynamics and stalking and it's yeah. kind of turning and everyone at Lifetime was in on that sort of quote unquote joke, you know, mm. of that, the sort of in on the tone of it from the beginning and really embraced it. It was kind of a departure for them. It was a risk. So you, so did you know from the get go that it would have its window at Netflix? That's a, an understood thing. Yeah. We, we knew that after it aired on Lifetime, it would air oh, on Netflix, which but, I, what happened and internationally, have, it would premiere as a Netflix original. That's what okay, one did. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, when it's hmm. when it's airing on, like I never knew about it on Lifetime. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's also you don't also, watch that much Lifetime. I don't watch that much Lifetime. <laughs> that much. But I mean, yeah. there's also so much content, right? There's so many yeah. channels. It's like, all right, I remember like the way that I learned about the show was Twitter because I opened Twitter one day and uh, the Netflix account had tweeted about it. Yeah, they said like 46 million people mm -hmm. watched you, and I was like, what? And then, which they never, by the way, disclose. They never give out the numbers. downloads. They won't tell the, the streaming the public. Data. So many people. I know. There's so many people. Wait, so, <laughs> so that has people. to hit you. You have no idea that that's coming, right? No, 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 no. The day before, like maybe the day before, they had shared internally what that number would be, and so again, Greg Berlanti came by the office, and he's like, he was basically like, here, just stand right there because I want to see your face when I touch ah. thing. Because I've been working on shows that I think could probably be called cult hits, maybe. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you know, even Supernatural, which is a show I worked on for many years mm -hmm. and is still on the air and is it's a 15 year run. 15 years. There's plenty of people who are like, I don't know where that is. I don't know what that is. That sounds like a witch thing or something. You know, it's not right. their thing. This is much more of a mainstream. I, I would, when I went on social media, I saw all these memes with Penn Badgley's face in them. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is an actual moment Yeah. that, um, you know, it goes a little bit beyond the line at Comic-Con. Yeah. Um, so that, that's been a fun new one for me. So when Greg tells mm -hmm. you, you're, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, right? I was like, holy shit. And then, I mean, what, what, it has to be a thrill that like you've been working as a writer, producer, and, you know, putting out good work, but then you hit, when something like hits beyond your imagination, and what's the feeling like? Uh, it's, I mean, I don't think any of us are writing so that just our moms will see it. Right. <laughs> right. We want people to This watch is the dream, work. right? Like, it is, is. It is. Yeah. And, it's also something I made peace with a long time ago that I have no control over. Right. Yeah. There's something that's so much, that's sort of none of the artist's business mm -hmm. yeah. about how their work is received. It's like you do the best you can, you work mm -hmm. with your collaborators, you put it out there and then it belongs to whoever finds it and responds to it, the bad and the good. And mm -hmm. I've experienced plenty of both in my career. The idea that it catches on and a lot of people want to talk about it, it's I just, I almost felt like an anthropologist watching that happen. I was very happy for all of the writers and actors and directors and everyone I work with because they want to feel like their work is seen yeah. and, and they want to be proud of it. And it's fun to work on a show that people know about. And what you know? do you, but what do you think the thing is that's hooking 46 million plus people? I mean, do you think at a certain point people are like, everyone's talking about this so now I have to see it? Do you think well, that, that happened? But that's that, the, the Game of Thrones thing. <laughs> that's that's the that's press play. Yeah, right. But that's not why you rip through it. That's right. not. I'm. I can't leave this room until I find out what happens I, to these people. I saw the the tweet. Yeah. And then I didn't go watch it. What happened was like we have almost a, like a same routine every night where we're in bed. She always goes to bed before me, and I'm flipping through. And as I'm scrolling through, uh -huh. I see the card, and I go like, "Oh, that was the the tweet was about this." I was like, "Maybe I'll just." Yeah. See how it starts. Penn Badgley is like giving you the eye yeah, from your homepage. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I go like, I'll just start it. And that was it. I mean, once mm -hmm. I, I just, you know. Well, we engineered it as best we could to be bingeable. Oh, and you did a great job. I'm, I come from, um, I and many of the writers and producers do come from a background of network TV. Mm. It's a different era now in the last few years where most TV, a lot of TV is coming at you and it's like these beautiful eight or 10 or 13 episode packages mm -hmm. wrapped in shiny paper it's a little story and then julia roberts will be done but mm -hmm. that's not what it was like when i started in tv which is over a decade ago most of the stuff was like csi yeah where you had to really understand how to make an episode how to cliffhang the episode mm -hmm. and make people wait for next week which you know the, that model is going away but we applied it to this because we really wanted an engine we wanted people to come to the end of the episode and be like I really need to find out what next yeah. week Peach. That, that's what I appreciated oh, so no. much. That's what Fucking I appreciated peach. so much about the series <sighs> was one thing was that a lot of TV mm -hmm. now, I feel like they go, well, you know, we got to, this thing has to have legs to continue 
yeah on and on and on so we can't like you can't have that many things actually happen yeah you can tease that something will eventually happen but then when you see i mean we can we've already given the, as a spoiler alert for this talking about obviously season one but like when you see that he follows to the house you imagine in your mind as a viewer when he goes to her to peach's place that mm -hmm. like okay he's just gonna sneak out you never imagine that there'll be the confrontation and a shooting and you know like that's mm -hmm. actually you're like oh my god how is this show gonna go on yeah that like happens? yeah what's gonna or, happen after or that? when that's she crazy. finds the box in the bathroom oh you, you go my like god. well she can't like she can't possibly put it all together because then the whole thing is up it explodes is up, the whole you know? thing yeah so yeah, like every time those things are ha yeah you're like no way <laughs> and then eventually when you build to the second to last and last episode mm -hmm. and he's basically got her kidnapped and holding her hostage you're like all right in your head you're like so i guess because you know there's a season two announcement that came you're like all right she's gonna forgive him i guess next season will probably be about <laughs> like how how they, they they make like she's gonna make up and not and maybe they'll tease how the he could put charges pressed like you're running through these things in your mind yeah. you are never going there's no way that that it's going to end that way you right, know? Like right. It's, it's, it's just like it's a thrill uh, as far as entertainment like that's what I, I got so hooked on the entertainment value of the whole thing hello and thank you for watching that highlight uh if you want to see more of those we have them they're provided for you so enjoy just do a deep dive like you're trying to study us click on these and subscribe hit the subscribe button and then they'll just be delivered to you you can watch them when they come out please do it